Baby, I don't know what y'all sitting there waiting for an intro for. It ain't no intro on this one, baby. It's just tea. Pure tea. Hi, everybody. This is Ashley with Ashley Says So. I am back with another Old Hollywood Scandals video. This video is going to be about the scandalous Mr. Bobby Womack. And yes, I did already know this stuff, but I learned it when I was younger. So to reread it as an adult, baby but anyways let's get to it bobby womack was born march 4th 1944 on the fairfax end of cleveland ohio his mother's name was naomi womack who played organ for the church choir and his father's name was friendly womack who worked at a steel mill and also was a part-time minister and musician now bobby also had four brothers and their names were friendly jr harry Curtis and Cecil. Now, Bobby said that he and his family came up very, very poor, that they had to actually fish pig snouts out of the supermarket trash to eat them. Um, he said the rats live better than them. But at the same time, it seems like they had to have some kind of money because let me tell you this story. They daddy owned a guitar and he didn't want none of his boys touching the guitar. So they was kind of like the Jackson 5 with this because the boys was messing with his guitar anyway. So all of them played it, but Bobby played it one night and he broke the string on it. And child, his little tail tried to replace the guitar string with a shoestring. And you could tell the end that Bobby, little Bobby was finna be a mess. Shoestring Bobby. Anyways, his daddy came home and noticed the shoestring, obviously, and was like, you know, who broke it? What's going on? So finally, Bobby admitted that it was him, and his daddy told him to play the guitar, sing for him. If you good, I'm not gonna whoop your tail, but if you bad, boy, I'm finna go to work on you. Baby, Bobby grabbed that guitar and started singing for his life, honey. You hear me? He just, look across 110th Street. I'm just kidding. He ain't singing that, y'all. That song wasn't even out yet. But he sang something, and whatever he sang, his daddy was very impressed. And this is why I said the family had to have something, or unless the daddy spent his life savings or something, because soon he bought all five of his sons a guitar. And by the time the 1950s hit, the whole family, the brothers and the parents, were touring as a gospel group. Everybody played in a little band together, and they were known as the Womack Brothers. And this is when they all ran into Sam Cooke. Cloud, have mercy. Y'all gonna see why I say that soon. But anyway, Sam was singing with the Soul Stirs. So they were all kind of singing in the same units. And that's when Sam found the Womack Brothers. Well, at this time, Sam Cooke didn't really have any power. Like I said, he was still with the Soul Stirs. But the Womack Brothers sounded so good to him that when he went solo and started his secular career and started his own record label, he actually signed the brothers and they became the Valentinos. Now, Bobby and Sam formed a closer relationship than the other brothers and that is because Sam recognized that Bobby could not only sing, but he also knew how to write. So Sam took Bobby under his wing. He was a mentor to Bobby. Um, he looked at Bobby sometimes like a little brother, even like a son. But this relationship did not last long because in 1964, Sam Cooke was murdered. And Chad, this is when the scandal came through, baby. So Sam Cooke is murdered. And as you all know or should know, and if you don't know, go watch my Sam Cooke video. He was married to a lady named Barbara Cooke. And Chad, after... And before, I'm just going to tell it like it is, baby. And before Sam died, Barbara and Bobby had something going on. And this is ridiculous because Sam looked at Bobby like a son, like I already said. And I know Sam Cook was out doing his stuff. I understand that. But the thing is, is that if Barbara was going to cheat, she doggone sure should have cheated with somebody besides Bobby. But let me tell you why it's about to get so messy. Because you know how I'm saying that Bobby and Barbara were messing around before Sam died? I mean, I don't know if that's true, but it just seems like everything points to that. But that's going to be even more messy. I'm going to tell you why in a minute. Anyways, let me get back to it. So, Barbara and Bobby messing around. Apparently have been messing around. All right, so Sam dies. And uh, Bobby, crazy. I don't know what's wrong with this fool. Walked up in the funeral with Sam's suit and watch on. I know y'all like who funeral. Baby, you heard what I said. Sam Cook funeral. Bobby sitting up there with his suit and watch on. Baby, I know that family was like, who suit on? And baby, we got to be grateful that the Cooks had some class about themselves. Because he would have pulled that at some folks funeral. And baby, that whole casket, everything would have been knocked over, baby. Them folks would have been on Bobby. Do you hear me? Anyway, let's get back to the story. So the funeral passes without incident, but the whispers have already started because, you know, if Bobby's walking in with Sam's suit on and watch on, 
how is this the case? It's got to be because the wife is letting him do this. So the whispers have already started. Now from here, there's two ways this thing can go. We can go with the version that they were already messing around, which is the one that I believe, or we can go with the version that they hadn't been messing around and they just started messing around after Sam passed away. Okay, let's go with that version. Well, Bobby and Barbara say that Barbara was so depressed and, you know, lonely after Sam died that she just, oh, she just felt like she was gonna do something to herself, honey. She just couldn't stand it no more. And so Bobby, he put on a superhero costume. He had an S on his chest and he ran over there to Barbara and he said, baby, don't hurt yourself, I'm here. I'm here, Barbara. And child, that ass on his chest look good to Barbara, honey. And so they laid down right then, honey, and they had been getting it on ever since. And so two months later after Sam's death, two months now, Barbara and Bobby have the bright idea that they want to get married. So they go up to the courthouse, and even the courthouse folks was like, babe, I know you lying. Y'all ain't getting married here. And they're like, why? You know, we want to get married. And the courthouse was like, no. First of all, Bobby is 20 years old. He needs his parents' consent to get married. And Bobby knew that his mother was not going to give that consent because his mother told him that he shouldn't marry Barbara. As a matter of fact, he said words as to like, his mother said something like, you know, you don't need to marry that man's wife. You don't know her. And Bobby should have listened to his mama. And if not his mama, he should have listened to them folks in that dang on courthouse. When they told him that, no, sir, you're too young. We know you lying and you ain't finna do this. He should have took his tail home back to his mama. But he thought he was grown, child. He didn't want to listen. And also, he and Linda at this time are making love a lot. Like, there's a lot of passion between them. Like, they're staying in the bed. You see what I'm saying? So, they're both kind of drunk in love, especially Linda. I'm going to tell you how drunk in love her crazy tale was. But anyways, after three months, he turns 21 and they do get married. And when they get married, it causes an uproar, baby, that apparently neither one of them saw coming. But the weird thing is, is why didn't they see this coming? Anybody could have saw this coming. The radio stations dropped Bobby Womack. They wouldn't play any more of his music. Uh, did nobody want to have nothing to do with him. He was getting death threats. And even Barbara, she wasn't immune to the threats and stuff. Men and women threatening to beat her tail, child. Her character came into question. Is she really the woman that she's being portrayed to be? You know, was she a good wife? Was she the reason that Sam ended up in the predicament he was in? Which is ridiculous to me. A man does what he wants to do. That's on him. It ain't got nothing to do with Barbara. But these are the things that were starting to get brought up. Even the fact that her son, Vincent, drowned in the pool. Hey, maybe she wasn't a good mother. Maybe she couldn't watch her son because she was sleeping with Bobby. Maybe she was sleeping with somebody else. You know, these are the things that are starting to be said. And then as far as Bobby, like I said, his family, nobody had anything to do with him because they were scared of the death threats. His brothers was like, no, we don't want to be in the car with you. Be in the car with you. And then somebody come up with a gun and, and we look like and they done shot me and I'm sitting up there. I'm laid up dead because you sitting up there wanting to marry this man's wife. Matter of fact, quit riding by my house. Leave me alone. You know, so scared, child. You done caused the whole mess. And then how are y'all so surprised at the backlash or all the attention when y'all sitting up there on the cover of a magazine showing that y'all got married? Like, it's almost like y'all invited this in. What did y'all expect people to be happy for y'all? Baby, come on. Folks love Sam. Y'all got to come better than that. Y'all got to do better than that. And child, they should have let that little magazine cover out, honey, because I don't know if it was the night of the wedding or a week or whatever after. But I do know that all of Sam's brothers showed up at their doggone house, baby. Now, this is where two stories come in. Now, they claim that they came to check on Barbara to see how she was doing after Sam passed. You know, they're coming to check on their sister-in-law, see if she was okay. This is what the brothers say. And they said they knocked on the door, and then when Barbara opened the door, child, they got the shock of their life, honey. Because they said they're standing in front of them was Bobby in Sam's pajamas. And honey, they just lost it, child. They jumped all over Bobby. Ooh, they beat him up good, child. Busting him all in the head, kicking him. Said they broke his jaw, kicked him all in the ribs, kicked him in the face. I mean, they just really went to town on Bobby. And it also seems like they beat his hairline back. Because, baby, after this incident, Bobby Womack hairline was never the same, honey. And said they would not stop beating him until Barbara came in with Sam Cook's gun. And she let off a shot. And she was like, y'all leave my house right now. Leave him alone and leave this house. That is one side of the incident. The other side said the brothers came ready to jump on Bobby. Said they was banging on the door. Boo, 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 let me in. We know he in here. And while they were banging on the door, Barbara was loading bullets inside of the gun. She was getting it ready. So she's loading bullets. And then I guess after she loaded the gun, she went to the bathroom, which is weird. 
And I guess they either bust down the door or Bobby opened the door. And this time, as soon as they saw, it wasn't about no pajamas this time because they came ready to whoop his tail. So as soon as they saw him, they jumped on him. And in this version, Barbara did come out of the bathroom and she held the gun up and she told them to leave or she would kill them. But she didn't let off a shot in this version because Bobby said that he had taken the bullets out of the gun when she went to the bathroom. So, you know, I don't know which version to believe. That is on y'all. It really don't matter. What matters most is that Bobby got his tail whooped and after that, his hairline was never the same. And even after this incident, it still was not over between him and the Cook brothers because it is said that either LC Cook or one of the other Cook brothers had a phone conversation with Bobby and told him like, man, it could have been anybody else to marry Sam's wife. But why is it you, man? Not you. Like, why would you marry his wife? The Cook family took it as total disrespect. So Bobby and Barbara do get over this incident and they're living their life and they're having a good time. Barbara even gets pregnant by Bobby and they have a son named Vincent, which is kind of weird, I guess, because she had a son named Vincent by Sam, but maybe she just wanted to name this baby in memory of that baby. And let's go back to Linda being drunk in love. Remember I told y'all she was drunk in love and they're having a good time now. Let me tell you how drunk in love this woman was. Or maybe she just did this out of animosity and vengeance. But anyways, she listened to Bobby when he told her to sell all of Sam Cook's stuff, the ownership, all his rights to everything. She sold that man's stuff for $10,000, baby. Everything Sam had worked so hard for, that woman sold it off, sold off his legacy for $10,000 thousand dollars but she crazy she that, that's dumb on her part let to keep it real i told y'all i'm keeping it real she's a dummy because baby that could have had you set for life not only you but your children but you're so either in love and and stupid or or just so like mean and nasty because you cannot forgive sam for what he did that you ruined yourself and your kids baby i would i would have been mad at sam but you better believe i would have had millions while i was doing it Bet that. But Linda's not worried about that. She got her 10 stacks. She got her man. They've had their child. Like, you know, everything is going good. They're going to bed together every night. They're waking up in the morning. They're making love. Going to bed, waking up. And then one night, Barbara notices that Bobby is not in bed with her. So she's like, you know, where, where's Bobby? Where's my man? Child, he probably in the kitchen drinking some coffee. Let me go check it out. Baby, he wasn't in that kitchen. And honey, I guess she went and checked the bathroom. Child, she probably checked everywhere. But there was one place that she hadn't checked yet. And I know she didn't want to check it because she didn't want to see it. But honey, she had to. Baby, she opened up that door to her daughter Linda's room and flicked on that light. And there go Bobby, butt naked in the bed with her daughter. Ooh, child, they said Linda turned on that light and was like, you dirty effing bastard. What are you doing in here with my daughter? Child, Bobby jumped up out that bed and Linda started trying to bust him all upside the head, honey. She tried to chase him, but he was too fast. But she said, you know what? I know what you can't run from. Baby, she got that gun and chased him outside and fired a bullet and it grazed his scalp, honey. I almost killed that man out there. And uh, seeing something like that, that would make you want to kill a man. Child, let's just take a moment and process it, though. Let's process it, sisters and brothers. Can you imagine your mate, your husband or wife, Getting caught in the bedroom with your teen son or daughter? Let's move on before the police come checking my page, child, trying to find out which one of us is killers. Now, after this incident, supposedly Linda was just so, like, distraught and she loved Bobby so much and couldn't stand her mother. She never forgave her mother for this and they never spoke again. But there's more history than that. There's a little bit more history than that because a lot of people think it's simple. He married Barbara, he started messing around with Linda, and he got caught. But apparently there's a little bit more history than that. Now, let's rewind it back a little bit. You know how I said that Sam and Barbara apparently look at Bobby like a son, like a child, okay? So with this information in mind, think about this. There are some sources that say that Linda, the daughter, and Bobby had actually already had a relationship. They were already talking. They were already like, you know, not necessarily boyfriend and girlfriend, but they were working their way to it, okay? And that makes more sense to me that he was already talking to her. And the sources say the reason Linda never forgave her mother is because she was already ticked off at her mother because Barbara came in and basically stole Bobby from her. 
Now this takes away from my theory where I said Barbara and Bobby were already messing around before Sam died. It takes away from my theory, but it leads credence to the theory that then he became that so-called shoulder for Barbara to lean on. That is when Barbara like kind of threw her weight on him. She wanted him for herself. She didn't care about wrecking her daughter's feelings and she didn't care about what her daughter wanted. It was like, listen, I'm the woman of this house and that's a handsome young man and I want him. And to be honest, Bobby was closer to Linda, the daughter's age, than the mother's age. She was already in her 30s, probably about 34, 35 years old. Bobby was only 21. Now, let's get into this. Because some people say that Linda was only 14 years old when Bobby got caught in the bed with her. That's what some sources say. Other sources put her at 18. But whether 14 or 18, that's still closer to the age of 21 than a woman that's about 34, 35 years old. Okay? So, you know, just a little information to put out there amongst all this tea. So there you go. Barbara and Bobby never get back together. They divorce soon after that because, of course, she's caught him in bed with her daughter. Mother and daughter never speak again. Now, this story is, of course, about Bobby, but I'm pretty sure y'all won't mind if I go ahead and break in another little bit of tea off up in here. So, you may think that now that they're both free, Bobby and Linda would get together and get married, but that is not the case. Linda went on to marry Bobby's brother, Cecil Womack. Let me give you a little tea about this. Now, Cecil first met and had interactions with Linda when she was about eight years old and he was about 14. He said even then that he wanted to marry her. He said that she seemed so much like an adult. She seemed like she was 18 years old. She was very knowledgeable, very mature, and that instantly at that time he wanted to marry her. He even said stuff like he wanted to kiss her. Now, when the year 1964 hit, Linda was around 11 years old, somewhere in there, and Cecil was 17 years old, somewhere in there. That is the year that Sam Cooke died. So after his death, Cecil comes over and they're talking and he basically tells her like, I'm in love with you and I want you to marry me. Now, she's 11 years old. This is all just so weird to me, but they talk about it like it's so normal, y'all. But anyway, and she tells him, like, I know I want to marry you too. I want to be with you, but we can't right now. It's just too soon. And you think? And a fun fact about this meeting, well, I don't even know if this is a fun fact. This is just a scandalous fact, is that the Cecil said, even though that um, Linda had said she's too young and even though she was 11, he says he wishes he just would have took her away and married her then. And people didn't know why at the time, but we know why now because he's hating that he left her there and his brother got dibs on her first. That's what the real hate is. That's why he wished he would have took her away. He did not. He did not take her away. They ended up growing apart. And he ends up marrying Mary Wells, Motown's first lady, Mary Wells, okay? But he don't want her, child. He was not checking for Mary. As a matter of fact, he beat on Mary. And he was probably beating on her because she was not Linda. That's who he really wanted. So why he married Mary Wells, I'm not sure. I mean, he probably liked the woman a little bit. But he wasn't in love with her like that because he mistreated Mary Wells very badly. He stole from her and beat on her, like I said. And Mary Wells found comfort in another brother, Curtis Womack. So you see, this thing is all twisted and tangled, child. It's just one huge hot mess. Mary Wells gets beat on by Cecil, okay? After he beats on her, she got to find comfort somewhere. So why not just keep it in the family? Like, I don't want to mess with somebody outside of this family. The Womack brothers is it, honey. I'm just going to keep it all in the family. And so she starts messing with Curtis Womack. Like I said, another brother. She and Curtis get along fine. She finds out that she actually loves Curtis. And she divorces Cecil and she marries Curtis. But not before having children with Cecil. So she had children with Cecil, divorced him, and then married Curtis. And they get together. And then she had children with Curtis. So she got children that's like cousins and brothers and sisters. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, child. It's just a lot of, it's, it's, you need a graph to follow it pretty much. But yeah, that's what's going on. So here we go. Barbara and Bobby are finished. You know, he's kind of flailing out in the wind. He is a desperate drug addict and he's still working on his music. 
He has a quick marriage to this lady named Evelyn Evans, but that didn't go nowhere because Bobby was pretty much doing what he wanted to do. As a matter of fact, I saw one commenter. Now, I don't know how true this is because this is just a commenter that I saw on a blog website. But the woman said that while he was going through his marriages, he was messing with her auntie down in Tennessee. Like, he came down there. Her auntie was 18 years old. Bobby was how old he was. And, like, he was sleeping with her auntie. So, Bobby wasn't no good for nobody. And him and Evelyn did not last long. Now, let me insert a little bit of family tragedy in here. And this is about Bobby's younger brother, Harry Womack. He had been dating a lady named Patricia Wilson for the last six years. And Patricia was like one of those crazy types. She was very possessive. She was obsessive. And she felt like she owned Harry. She didn't want him to go anywhere. She wanted to keep him under her. You know, those overly possessive, clingy, but crazy women. They had a child together. But after a while, Harry got sick of this behavior. So he left her. He took his things and he left. And he went to go live with Bobby in Bobby's house. Bobby was on tour at this time, okay? So he's in Bobby's house. He's got his clothes and stuff over there. And Patricia comes in there. She comes in the house and they're arguing and fighting. And she's like, you know, so you done left me to be with somebody else. You done left me to be with this child. You know, you ain't gonna do me like this. And Harry is like, I'm sick of it. I can't deal with it no more. You're doing too much. You know, you don't trust me. And so Patricia starts going around the house, going in every room. And in one of the rooms, she found a woman's panties. Okay, and she accused Harry saying like, yeah, you have had a girl over here. Look at this. So you want to cheat, do this, blah, blah, blah. She grabs a steak knife and she stabs him in the neck and he dies right there. He's only 28 years old. And the ironic and pathetic thing about it is that those undergarments did belong to a woman, but that was one of Bobby's women. Harry didn't have nobody over there. He hadn't even been with nobody. Woman just killed him for no reason. Just crazy. You killed your child's father for what? And this happened on March 9th, 1974. But let's move on. So in December 1975, Bobby felt like he was ready to get married again. And he married a 19-year-old woman named Regina Banks. And they had three children. There was Truth Bobby, Bobby Truth, and Gina Ray. Now let's get into a little bit of scandal and tea here, honey. And this is all speculation, like this whole video is. It's all speculation. I don't know what's true, what's false, fact, whatever. Y'all know what it is, okay? But I just wanted to make this point right here, okay? So anyways, Bobby and Regina are married, okay? There are stories going around that, you know, she's 19, she likes to party, Bobby likes to party. So they're both doing drugs, they're both having orgies, they're both just having a crazy time. As a matter of fact, there's this lady by the name of Lyrica Garrett. She supposedly said that they, she had threesomes with them. They were in the room together. And supposedly she said that while she was there, they did leave their son, Truth Bobby, in another room, their little baby. They left him in another room to his own devices while they were doing what they want to do. Now, I believe her story because Truth Bobby died when he was only four months old. And the reason being is that they left him in a room by himself and then he ended up being wedged between the bed and the wall and the child suffocated. So he passed away only at four months. And Bobby Womack actually also blamed himself. He took it very hard because he was saying that if he wouldn't have been doing drugs and focused on the ladies and everything else, he could have been there with his son. So it really, really hurt him. And after him, like I said, they had another son named Bobby True. That child got into gangs and stuff. He was sent to a child detention center. So, you know, I don't, I don't really know exactly what kind of parents they were, but it doesn't seem like they were grade A parents. That's all I'm trying to say. And Bobby also was still cheating. He had two more children with a lady named Jody Laba. I think that's how you pronounce her name. And their names was Corey and Jordan. So he was still doing his thing. And Regina apparently couldn't take that lifestyle anymore. And so she left him in the 90s. Now, they did end up getting remarried in 2013. But she did leave him and divorce him after that first marriage. Now, everything that I've discussed so far pretty much happened in the late 60s and throughout all of the 70s. And you have to understand that, yes, Bobby Womack was blacklisted for a little while, but soon, child, his music got too good, honey. He was making If You Think You're Lonely Now, Across 110th Street, just all kind of wonderful songs. That's the way I feel about you. Child, they couldn't keep his stuff off the radio for long. People wanted to hear it. He was making great music. So while I'm telling you all this, you got to remember Bobby Womack is banging during this time. Like he is the man during this time. Let's not forget that, okay? But now we're going to go into the 80s. 
And in the 80s, he started to pay for his wild lifestyle. Um, his career started to slow down and his body started to slow down as well. The circulation, the blood circulation in his leg and in his body, wasn't it wasn't good anymore and he had to be hospitalized. He also went to rehab to kick his cocaine habits. Some people think he kicked it completely. Other folks think he kicked it and got back on it. You be the judge of that. Years after that, he developed prostate cancer. He also had diabetes, pneumonia, colon cancer, early stages of Alzheimer's disease. Um, he even said, I believe in his unsung episode that, you know, sometimes he can remember people, sometimes he can't. You know, it's good and bad days. I think he said that on unsung. Child, he said it in some interview. In 2012, he had surgery to remove a tumor from his colon. And after they got it out, he was declared cancer free. And at the age of 70, on June 27, 2014, everything ended up getting the better of Bobby Womack. And he passed away in his home in Tarzana, California. And child, I forgot to put this in the beginning, but I want to put this in here. Now, I don't know if it's true or not, but it is said that Bobby Womack was raped as a child by an uncle. I don't know, but like y'all already know, if I read it, if I see it, if I hear it, I put it in the video. Y'all already know that. And then there's one more thing that I needed to add about Bobby Womack and Barbara. Their son, Vincent, committed suicide at the age of 21 in 1986. It is said that he was depressed over a girlfriend that had broken up with him. So he shot himself in front of his mother. And this has been the old Hollywood scandalous tragic tale of Bobby Womack. Ain't no sense y'all waiting on the video to end because, uh, baby, y'all done came for me talking about, uh, I don't got no Facebook. Like, I ain't got no Facebook. Well, honey, I got an Instagram too. So get your tail on there and follow me on Instagram if you don't have a Facebook. And if you do have a Facebook, follow me on there. And y'all, I know that link I be pasting for the Facebook, sometimes it don't take you to my Facebook. I don't know why. But you can still find me. Just type in Ashley space says so. S-A-Y-S-S. Oh, and then you should be able to find my page. And it's the one where I got on that auntie wig. Because I got two different Ashley Says So pages. One of them is Ashley Says So 20. That is about to be deleted. Please do not follow that page. If you want my book, that's in the description. Oh, and if you have read my book or you are reading my book, let me know. Message me. Leave a comment or something. Tell me what y'all think about my book. I know the editing ain't perfect. I know. But, you know, the story-wise, tell me what you think of it. I love you guys so much. I hope you guys have a wonderful day.